接下来呢，我们邀请到越南计划投资部中央经济管理研究院公共服务政策处处长，同时也是 APEC 的越南代表阮梦海处长。阮处长有请。Okay, good afternoon. And um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the Workforce uh, Development Agency and uh, of the Ministry of Labour, Taiwan for uh, uh, giving me an opportunity to be here to, uh, to talk about uh, the uh, situation in Vietnam. And uh, we have a lot of concern of about the labor market in general and uh, the effect of globalization on the labor market in Vietnam and also the, uh, the talent exchange and sharing the human resources uh, with uh, the, the other countries like uh, Taiwan or, or the ASEAN uh, and the region and, and of course also at the uh, global arena. And, um, and, and I also uh, want to, uh, it's, it's sort of on my advantage that uh, after the presentation from uh, the, my college in uh, uh, Singapore uh, and Germany, France, and especially in Taiwan. So we, uh, I can uh, maybe I try to to save time on my presentation as well. Um, and um, so my presentation will be uh, just some part. Like uh, first of all, I would like to give some. Uh, brief information on the globalization, uh, but in the context of uh, in Vietnam, and then the development of workforce resources uh, in Vietnam as well, uh, and then the effect of uh, some of the effect of globalization on the talent exchange uh, in Vietnam, and uh, and also take uh, some uh, uh, remarks at the end, and. Um, And um, actually in Vietnam, both the government and also businesses are aware of the globalization um, at least for the last 20 years because we uh, recognize that the globalization is inevitable and irreversible as well. Uh, so like it or not, you, you have to face with the globalization. And, uh, and so the adaptation to this process is very important. Uh, from the view of the government as well as from the uh, businesses. And, uh, and also the globalization uh, can be uh, considered in all economic and technological and social, cultural and political aspects uh, in Vietnam as well. And uh, they, 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 we call talent, but actually uh, uh, we just consider it as the professional exchange. Uh, between Vietnam and other nations uh, and uh, we consider that this is also the natural process and uh, and, uh, in, uh, and you know that also we have uh, uh, basically we, we are somehow the uh, labor uh, exporting countries uh, and uh, many Vietnamese uh, uh, have been going to uh, Taiwan and also uh, to many other countries uh, and and, and uh, uh, a lot of them are in, in uh, lower skill laborers, but also some of them are in higher skill laborers. Uh, but in in my presentation, so focus on the, on on the uh, professional the exchange. And um, the, in the context of, of globalization, so uh, it's marked by the. Uh, the uh, W accession of Vietnam in 2007, and it uh, and means uh, the compete uh, better uh, in the uh, uh, so that it will help uh, um, Vietnam to compete better in international market. Uh, and also briefly, Vietnam also the part of the TPPs, as you know that uh, at the end uh, the US. The, withdrew from, from the TPP, but the remaining 11 parties uh, have already also come up with a partial agreement uh, just in November this year. Uh, so uh, Vietnam is also part of the, uh, the TPP and also 
we started already the uh, EU Vietnam FTA uh, in December 2015, uh, and uh, uh, that agreement uh, will come uh, into force in, in early 2018. Uh, and this is uh, this is just to give some context, and there is uh, some implication on the labor market in uh, in Vietnam as well. Uh, and we have signed also a number of BTAs and uh, and uh, officially joined Asian uh, Economic Community uh, uh, of ASEAN in 2016. And this is also uh, later on that we will talk about the uh, labor exchange uh, in that framework. And uh, for the, uh, this is the, this figure is, uh, tells us about the um, industrialization uh, process in Vietnam and uh, so you can see the, the, the um, blue line is actually this the uh, um, represent uh, for the uh, economic growth and also the purple uh, is for agri uh, for the growth of agri uh, country sector and, and uh, also the other color uh, um, also, the, uh, in the dark red is in the represent for the industry and construction, and other yellow bar is uh, for the service sector, uh, service growth. So you can see that um, actually the uh, agriculture sector in Vietnam uh, now is shrinking as well, uh, and uh, and the industrial uh, sector. Are growing, so that's why the demand for labor in, in that sector also increases, um, and that's including the uh, not only the domestic investment, but uh, due to uh, largely also due to the FDI, uh, including the uh, uh, FDI from uh, Japan, from uh, South Korea, from uh, Singapore, from Taiwan and from uh, many other countries. And um, this is the, the uh, mission that trade values and, and trade balance between Vietnam and, and APEC member countries. Um, for this, uh, we can see that the Vietnam uh, always have a uh, big uh, trade deficit uh, with the uh, APEC uh, member countries. So we imported, we take advantage of uh, a higher uh, level of development of uh, other APEC member countries. And um, uh, so we see that the import is always larger than export uh, from Vietnam. But it also proved that uh, we still have some more room in the future uh, for increase the export to other APEC uh, countries. Um, and um, the trading between Vietnam and APEX members has increased also rapidly. Uh, in the period, 10-year period from 2006 to 2016, so uh, Vietnam total import value, uh, import export value, uh, uh, so I mean the total between the import and import value, uh, rose by more than four times uh, from uh, uh, 66 uh, billion US dollars in 2006 to uh, 266 billion in 2016. Um, and uh, and in the total of import apples, uh, import export uh, value for the same period of Vietnam, so the APEC member country accounted for almost 66, uh, 76 percent of the total uh, import export value. Of the country, so it's it's, uh, it's mean that uh, the uh, APEC member countries are really important uh, uh, for Vietnam. And in the first uh, nine months of uh, 2017, so uh, the Vietnam's APEC member countries uh, also account for almost 70 percent of export and and even 85 percent of imports of uh, the country's total value. Um, and here is the, the FDI figures. So you can see that uh, uh, the, the, uh, the blue bar uh, stands for the total registered capital uh, of 
RTI. And also then in, in the, uh, the dark red the color uh, bars is uh, for the total implemented capital. And uh, in 2008, uh, so we, we can see that the total registered capital of FDI in Vietnam is uh, booming. Uh, but, uh, but actually, the uh, implemented capital also uh, not uh, increased uh, rapidly like that. It's due to the, uh, the uh, global the financial crisis at that time. But actually, the trend is, the, the, is increased uh, like, uh, from, for the period from 95 to 2016. Um, this is uh, uh, always the, the process that uh, Vietnam will also uh, try to attract more FDI, even the condition of limited uh, domestic uh, financial resources for investment. And uh, in this table, so you can see that the FDI to Vietnam by the countries uh, in the 2016 just uh, for one year. So we can see that here they go, the Sakura is the, is the top uh, investors in Vietnam, and uh, then Japan, Singapore, and Taiwan is the, the fourth uh, um, the, uh, foreign direct investors in Vietnam. Uh, yet eventually, Vietnam, Singapore is, or uh, Taiwan is always like uh, the second, the third, or the fourth uh, in the list for the whole period uh, from uh, the time that Vietnam opened uh, the policy, uh, the, the, the open door policy. And, um, and also, um, uh, but in terms, that is the context of globalization uh, in Vietnam. But for the workforce resources in Vietnam, actually, the um, Vietnam's uh, population uh, is, is, uh, is in the golden uh, stage, the, and, and this golden population uh, will last about 30 years from 2010, 2014. I mean, now we are in, this, in the, the, the periods of uh, golden population. Uh, but eventually, uh, the Vietnamese population is also aging rapidly. Uh, uh, and that situation also is, is very similar to uh, Japan or, or Singapore or Taiwan or Germany. I mean, uh, even now we have quite a young uh, population, but the population uh, is also aging uh, and, and, and with quite a uh, rapid uh, pace. And this is also uh, the, uh, should be taken into account for the policy making process uh, in Vietnam. And uh, the total workforce uh, as of uh, 2016 is uh, about almost uh, um, 54.5 uh, million and, uh, and had an increase of uh, 915,000 people per annum for 10 years from 2006 uh, to 2016. And so, uh, but, the, um, but, but actually the economic restructuring goes much faster than the workforce restructuring. It means that uh, the economy of Vietnam uh, uh, goes to the industrialization uh, train uh, uh, much faster than the, the workforce restructuring. So now, actually, uh, the agricultural sector accounts for about 16% of total GDP of Vietnam, but the, uh, the, the, the agricultural workforce uh, accounts for almost 42%. Uh, so most of them are still in the agricultural sector. Uh, so that is also the reason why um, there are a lot of uh, people try to move out of the uh, agriculture sector, including uh, going to uh, abroad um, for a uh, city job uh, and lots of opportunities. And, um, the sh uh, but also the share of trained workers in total workforce is modest uh, up to now. In 2016, just 21%. And, uh, and the workforce quality is still relatively low. 
uh, and uh, contributing to uh, low level of productivity and uh, is uh, lacking the competitiveness in international labor market. Uh, and this is the, the, the number of structure by age also for the period of 10 years. And it's once again uh, show that the uh, uh, aging population is present in, in, in Vietnam. And for the last 10 years, for example, the people uh, who are uh, 80 years or older is uh, just 3.1% in 2006. But after 10 years, it's uh, come up with 8.6% already. So it means that more than double in terms of the share uh, of the, 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 the labor force. And, um, and uh, also the employment status of workforce for just three years. So we can see that the informal workers is, uh, is, is, is increasing also, including about 80 million in 2016. Um, and also the, um, the workforce structure by training level, uh, so we can see the quality of the, 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 of the labor force. Uh, and uh, for the first row, row, you can see that the untrained workers account for uh, almost always 80%. So it's 82% in 2007 and, 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 and almost 79% uh, or 80% in 2016. Uh, and the trade workers uh, just account for about 20-21% up to now, but even lower in the past. Um, uh, and uh, for the, uh, the vocational training also, the, the percentage of uh, workers who have uh, conducted uh, the vocational training uh, is very low. At the vocational college level, so it's about Five to six percent, and for the elementary vocational training, just about three percent, four percent, and the college uh, also similar and even lower. Uh, but the university and postgraduate qualification increased uh, uh, also significantly in, from 2007 to 2016. Uh, this is also due to uh, a bit. Uh, uh, due to the Vietnamese culture, uh, which uh, emphasize a little bit on the uh, um, academic level. So, um, I mean, the, they had, they, there was a booming uh, number of uh, college and university during the last 10 years. And um, uh, of course, the quality of the higher education is is also need to, to be improved. But I think the number of uh, the college university uh, increased. So the people just try to be in the uh, university rather than in the vocational college or, or elementary vocational training. Uh, even the uh, level of the graduates uh, uh, who are unemployed uh, is a little bit high in Vietnam. And uh, for those who graduated from vocational uh, colleges, uh, sometimes they, they, uh, it's easier for them to, to find a job compared to uh, some university graduates. But this is so, this um, trend uh, should change in, in the future, future as well. And, and the government is also aware of that. And, and also, the demand uh, the, uh, uh, of the society for uh, the vocational uh, uh, college uh, in the training are uh, also uh, increasing um, for the last few years. Uh, and this is the, uh, uh, the, the, the Global Talent Competitive Index uh, in 2017. Uh, that is the source from the, uh, the INSEAD. So our 118 countries uh, in this uh, in, in the example. So we then have a uh, rank about uh, 86 in the, uh, the overall index. Uh, but for high level skill, uh, so we rank just 101 over 
180, so it's relatively low. And, uh, and the formulation with tertiary education, for example, so with a score more than 10.5, so we rank 82. Uh, but for the, uh, uh, for the, the professional, so we also uh, rank 82. But for the talent impact, so we rank quite high at 23, meaning that they got high skill uh, labels and also experts are very important in Vietnam and they have quite a significant impact on the economic development of Vietnam. Uh, and also in terms of uh, vocational and technical skill, so we rank 98 over 180, so relatively at the lower uh, section. And also the, uh, um, but for the employability, so we rank 53, 53, so relatively higher than above the average. Uh, and um, also the uh, relevance of the education system to the economy is uh, 68, also on the average somehow. And um, so, uh, in terms of the effects of globalization on the, the talent exchange and sharing uh, human resources in Vietnam. So as I mentioned already, so in Vietnam, globalization is, the, is seen in by economic, technological, and social, and also the political integration. So including the increase, the uh, internationalization of labor markets. And um, so it means that uh, as um, we also know that some Vietnamese labor also go uh, um, to, to abroad uh, to, to get the, 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 the job there. And also, we have quite a number of experts and managers from, uh, uh, from, from other countries, especially for the uh, um, host countries of FDIs like uh, Japan, Singapore, or Taiwan. So you've got uh, expert and also the um, technician uh, who come to Vietnam to uh, operate their businesses as well as for uh, the working for the international um, organization or, or the international uh, companies as well. Uh, and the, the talent attraction competition among the countries, uh, I mean, among Vietnam and also among the public and private sector in Vietnam is very high. Uh, and um, because they, uh, the, the, now the cross-border as well as the non-cross-border labor mobility are high uh, in Vietnam. And um, however, the, the viewpoint in Vietnam also changed in the sense that uh, the, the impact of uh, brain drain uh, on, on, on welfare and development in, 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 the, uh, in the countries is complex and is not always considered negative, but sometimes it's positive as well. Because uh, some, um, sometimes the, the, the source countries uh, could have brain gains like uh, Vietnam or so, due to the, such as the returning from talent from more advanced economies. And as the, our the speaker from the, the Ministry of Labor also said, some Vietnamese um, uh, workers or technicians who were in Taiwan or in Japan or from other countries, when they go back to Vietnam and they bring back the skills uh, necessary for uh, the economic uh, development in Vietnam as well. So it's useful for Vietnam. So this is not a brain drain, but also sometimes have brain gains as well. Uh, and, and this is uh, also the way uh, in Vietnam. Uh, and in terms of uh, the Vietnam uh, Global Competitiveness Index of 2015 to 2016, uh, so here we can see the uh, labor market efficiency is, is high. Vietnam ranked about 52 over 140 in this sample. Um, and, uh, and also the, the progress 
we make progress in terms of uh, the index for 2015-2016 if we compare to uh, 2012-2013-14. Uh, as you can see on, on, on the table. Um, but the, um, and also the, the, the higher education and training, so we rank quite below the, the average, by 95 over 140, but for the health and uh, primary education, so it ranks about 61 uh, with uh, five, five and nine score, um, and uh, so this is, um, about the, the average uh, in terms of the uh, competitiveness index. Uh, this this comes to the uh, index of uh, the country capacity to retain talent or the capacity to attract talent. So we rank also something like on the average, like uh, 87 and 77. So the capacity of uh, Vietnam to attract talent is higher than the, the country capacity to retain talent uh, somehow uh, from here. Um, and so you, you also can see the, uh, the other index as well. Um, for the pay and productivity is a little bit better, uh, as you can see, so we rank about 45. And um, some, some uh, points that uh, we can summarize uh, for this effect is also that uh, even uh, we have uh, general unemployment or low skill level of employees that, uh, that, that that's still, uh, but it, this fact does not directly relate to the scarcity of talent in Vietnam. I mean we, uh, so that's why we still want to attract more talent from other countries as well. Uh, and, um, and especially with Vietnam lacks of personal management in terms of both quantity and quality. Uh, because the number of qualified people with uh, the knowledge and skill uh, in the professional management is limited. Because it's due to the fact that they uh, we had just um, uh, have about 20 years up to now uh, to to have the, the uh, to open MDI as well as the uh, uh, just the large corporation uh, have come to Vietnam to operate um, for at the maximum of 25 years. So it's not long uh, compared to other countries, including Taiwan. So that's why the the the, the Vietnamese national uh, personnel uh, uh, of high, uh, high, high quality uh, of management is still uh, quite limited. And uh, this lack of, of uh, domestic supply of high skill workforce uh, leads to a higher demand in foreign and overseas Vietnamese uh, um, in, in that sense. So that's why. Uh, we also have some policy that try to remove policy uh, as well as the, the foreign uh, talents uh, to work in Vietnam. Uh, and um, for, the, um, for example, the, uh, the, the investment and remittances from the overseas economies uh, have been increasing, in, in, especially in recent years. So and, uh, we reached uh, the peak of uh, in 2015, uh, with uh, 13.2 billion the uh, US dollar, uh, billion in the US dollar. So, uh, fortunately, this uh, almost of them is 72 percent of the remittances uh, goes to uh, production uh, and business, and uh, about 21 percent um, uh, goes to real estate investment in Vietnam, which is also a booming in the last um, 15 years, about 20 or 15, 15 to 20 years in Vietnam. Um, but the one of the fact is, is that also there is the increasing number of young Vietnamese and um, overseas Vietnamese that also seek their opportunity in Vietnam. Uh, and, and, uh, and this is uh, mostly they come to 
uh, the southern parts of Vietnam where the uh, commercial activities uh, uh, have been uh, booming. Uh, and, and this is the situation uh, up to them. And, uh, and also the number of students studying abroad, especially that from the self-funded source, is increasing uh, quite significantly in recent years. It's just due to the, uh, the uh, uh, increase the, the share of the uh, higher income or middle class income uh, in Vietnam. Uh, so this, the, the number of uh, the students studying abroad, uh, basically from the self funded source, increased uh, for the period of uh, the last four or five years. Um, and um, up to now, it is estimated that uh, about 100,000 uh, 100, uh, Vietnamese were studying abroad during uh, 2016, and an increasing number, uh, but uh, we don't have the, 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 the statistics, exact statistic, but we know that uh, a lot of them also are uh, seeking job opportunity in the international labor market, uh, and, and some will come back to uh, Vietnam as well. But the number of the, 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 the uh, uh, university graduates are uh, higher uh, seeking for job opportunity in the international labor markets uh, increasing. And also, the, uh, another fact is that the IEC, the ASEAN Economic uh, Community, uh, um, also they, uh, in place, and, uh, and we have uh, the uh, labor exchange for the higher uh, skill uh, labor in six sectors. Uh, and, uh, and this is also a opportunity for both Vietnamese and ASEAN national uh, to work in, in ASEAN uh, 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 country, including Vietnam. And this is uh, we make the uh, labor market uh, for higher uh, uh, skill, uh, professional, uh, more competitive in, in, in Vietnam. And the uh, sick occupation include the engineering, nursing, architecture, medicine, dentistry, tourism, and um, serving and accountancy as well. And um, they, so this is, as I said, that the Asian experts have more opportunity to work in Vietnam, and also the Vietnamese experts have larger chance to work in, in the region. Um, uh, but of course, they are still, this still will account for modest uh, percentage of uh, uh, the, 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 the total Vietnamese workforce uh, just account for about one percent because it's limited in t to uh, just six uh, occupations as, as you have seen. Um, but uh, as for Vietnamese um, uh, high school laborers, uh, they still have some barriers, uh, like the barriers on language and uh, culture, and especially. The, the recognition of uh, competency, the certificate system, because uh, they have the uh, degree in Vietnam, for example, but in some cases, so it's not recognized uh, already by the competency uh, certificate system of ASEAN countries. So we need to have a harmonization process for that. And uh, also the barriers of languages uh, as well, because I know that uh, in Vietnam there are some and there are many um, doc, uh, medicine doctors, for example, who are very good uh, in in, in their uh, specialty, uh, but uh, their language is not so good. So that's why it's also the barrier for them to approach the ASEAN uh, market. Uh, and uh, and also I need some others uh, occupation as well. For example, dentistry, for example. So there are many good uh, Vietnamese. Uh, uh, doctors are good in dentistry, but uh, also the area of languages and, and sometimes the, the, the certification system. And so, so it's also uh, on the barrier. I mean, on the one hand, we have some opportunity, but also we you have know, um, um, also the uh, quite the real challenges for them. 
uh, as well. And um, so I will come to uh, an end for the that was said the some summarized and selected uh, remarks that uh, uh, once again I will try and emphasize that the, the globalization uh, are accepting in Vietnam and both from the government and business and, and the people also are aware of the, both the opportunities and, and, and challenges uh, going along with this uh, process. And uh, so the human resource development and uh, management are affected by this process with the uh, different effects on the government and businesses and employees as well. But um, but uh, but of course the uh, this is the it seems that the the, the, the positive effect and, and always as we uh, also uh, aware that seem to outweigh the negative in, uh, impact and I think it's also for most of other countries as well and. Uh, and the, the, uh, the international talent exchange, or we can say the professional exchange or movement, uh, is good uh, for the long term growth as well as for the long term uh, development of Vietnam as well as for other countries uh, in the region. And the, um, the talent mobility would have to promote uh, the economic growth in Vietnam. So, by the, for example, bridging skill gap and also to uh, try to fill up filling up the uh, high school labor shortage and also they is keep, um, and uh, is also give the motivation or uh, encourage the young Vietnamese talent to improve their skills for participating in the regional and, and uh, global labor market um, and Due to that, the, the further reforms in education system in Vietnam, uh, including the uh, reforms in the vocational training, is in high demand uh, in, in the community. And this is, uh, I think this also gives the opportunity for, for the foreign uh, uh, vocational training even in Vietnam. Uh, and, and this is the, the, the high demand. And they, uh, um, so that's why they, they exchange the experiences of, uh, of making um, the, uh, this education system and education policy and uh, so the vocational education uh, system uh, and uh, regulation uh, very helpful for Vietnam as well. Uh, so uh, we are eager to learn from experiences from uh, other countries uh, including Thailand and, uh, for that process. And so it is uh, uh, we also need to, uh, needed to focus on the professional skill training and, uh, and other skill core skills like uh, communication, teamwork, and uh, creative and critical thinking, especially foreign languages. Right? And in English, uh, it's very important. And, uh, more and more people in Vietnam now uh, um, are eager to learn English, and uh, the number of people who can speak English also increasing. But there's still, still a small share in the, uh, the, the workforce. So it is a, a good opportunity to improve and the pressure from the international labor market is also one of the motivations for that. So, uh, and this is also uh, required improvements in the labor law system and uh, labor market institution and policy. And uh, so that is match well with the international labor standard. And this is uh, uh, some implication for the policy making in Vietnam that uh, I would like to uh, draw on later. So thank you very much uh, for your listening and your attention. Thank you, thank you to Dr. Nguyen Ngoc Thai. Thank you so much.